a bottle of white, a bottle of red, perhaps a bottle of rosé instead. They say in vino veritas, to that I say let's raise a glass. Welcome back to Got Knowledge, where you'll not only brush up on your blind tasting skills, but also enhance the enjoyment of your next glass of wine. My name is Denise, your virtual partner in wine. Tonight's session in How to Taste, A Guide to Enjoying Wine by Jancis Robinson is Possible Distractions, Feeling Right. Birds fly in a high, you know how I feel. Breeze drift in a bar, you know how I feel. Feeling the good. Feeling good is what this session is all about. There's a close connection between feeling good and things going right. Say, for instance, you're playing golf. As the club connects with the ball, just by sound, by feel, you already know that the drive is good. Why? Because at the moment of impact, it felt good. And when you take a mouthful of wine, and your taste buds begin signaling to you loud and clear what that luscious liquid in your glass might be, it's because you feel good. Why? It's because your senses are working in harmony with your body. But there are some things that can trip up your taste buds that get in the way of your feeling good at a tasting. What are they? In a word, distractions. And I can think of three. The first distraction is physical. Ordinary things we do without giving it a second thought, like brushing our teeth. But it's toothpaste, mouthwash, minty mints, gum, and the like that can overwhelm our palates with their strong flavors. Any subtlety in a wine would be lost. It would be like trying to hear a canary over a brass band. Even having chocolate, a dress salad, or a cup of tea can prejudice your palate because they are high in the basic tastes found in wine, like sweetness, acidity, and tannin. Solution? Best avoid any strong flavors prior to a tasting. Otherwise, eat something absorbent and bland like bread until you work out your own neutralizing technique. You're trying to identify an elusive white. Is it a Gewürztraminer or a Muscat? They're both frustratingly similar. And while concentrating on which one it is, Another thought pops into your mind. I wonder if I should have that barbecue this weekend. Huh? How did I get from tasting to basting? This is the mental distraction. One minute you're thinking about a wine in your glass, the next, whether or not to walk your dog. And to make matters worse, the more tired you are, the more difficult it is to stay focused. However, there is a remedy for the meandering mind, and that is to be well rested before a tasting. Last, but certainly not least, you have spatial distractions. This is when people and conversations begin drifting into your consciousness. And since it's not likely that you'll be going to a tasting in a vacuum, you might find while nosing a wine, your concentration beginning to drift over to a conversation across the room. Solution? 
be a Maxwell Smart and develop your own cone of silence. This will help you better concentrate on what's happening inside your mouth than what's going on on the other side of the room. Speaking of spatial distractions, what do you do if you think you're drinking a Bordeaux and someone of obvious experience says it's a burgundy? Trust your gut. According to Robinson, more often than not, it's the rookie who gets it right in a blind tasting. Beginner's luck? Perhaps. But let's just say that too much information can muddy the waters of judgment, even for the veteran. Well, that concludes tonight's session. Tune in next week for Practical Matters, The Right Temperature. Thank you for joining me, and remember, got knowledge? Pass it on. A bottle of red, a bottle of white, it all depends upon your appetite. I'm here on Tuesday, so drop by. Arrivederci, ciao, goodbye.